Okay, so in this quick video, I'm going to show how we um, create the black dog on black background images that we um, create for the hearing dog sample for two of our clients. So the most important thing to note about this is it's actually about the lighting of the dog, not the photoshopping, but you still need the photoshopping in there too to be able to create that finished image. So here's one of the images um, taken a couple of weeks ago at the hearing dogs. Um, this is a black lab, although it's colour, it looks slightly chocolatey. A lot of that's to do with the way the light plays in through the detail of the fur. So this, this has got one key light front right, um, so to the right of the camera, and it's got um, a couple of um, strips of white light coming from the back, which give this beautiful rim light to the dog. So the first thing I do, as I always do, is create a duplicate layer. That duplicate's the one I'm going to work on. Almost never work on the background layer. Um, and I'm going to use the um, stamp tool just to clean up the worst of any bits of fluff on the dog's fur because we want this to be absolutely pristine when it's finished. And you'll notice on a black and white, far more than on a colour image, these little flecks of dust um, on his fur. Always have your finger on the undo key when you're doing this, um, for when you make mistakes, which you do all the time. If it doesn't look quite right, just undo it and have another go. There's a million techniques for this. You can use, if you want to, um, spot healing tool. That works just as well. But I quite like the control I get with the stamp tool. And in this instance, I'm using a stamp tool with quite, um, not a hard edge, but not a soft edge either. Uh, you need to find the right balance for you and what you're doing. If you use a really soft edge, you tend to find it gets a bit mushy as it blurs everything and it just doesn't look real anymore. If you use too hard an edge, of course, you can see uh, where the stamp was used. So I'm just very gently going through it, picking off the worst. I'll leave some of the texture in, it's not, I don't want this to look plastic, I want it to be very much a real dog. I just don't particularly want to see his dinner in the final photo, whatever it was he was eating last. It looks like biscuits to me. Just getting rid of the worst of the bits that would show up in the final image. If I was doing this for a competition image, this would be absolutely meticulous, but I'm doing this just very quickly to show what to do. Okay, that'll do. And then what I'm going to do, again, duplicate that layer. So if I make a mistake, I can always go back to the work I've done. Um, the thing with the history, which you use as well, is it doesn't typically store everything you've done. It only stores the last 10 or 8 or 12, whatever it is you've set your preferences, actions. And when you're doing lots of tiny little details, that might not be enough. And there's nothing more frustrating than making a mistake and then realise you haven't got enough undos to go back um, to where you need to be. So I've selected everything. Invert the selection. Edit. Fill. Black. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Dodge tool, which is set to shadows, 100% exposure, and the protect tones is off. I don't want to protect the tones, I want it to go to black. Um, nice soft brush, and then very gently, I'm just gonna work my way in, around the edges, taking off the, the black velvet. Black velvet's very good at soaking up light, but it's not perfect, and particularly in the time we have, um, I don't have time to reset the lighting rig from the white background. Quite literally, all we do is throw um, black velvet down the middle of it, um, it's a last light highlight, and leave a couple of strips of white light round the edges to create this beautiful rim light. Very gentle, nice gentle strokes. Um, and then just to make sure I've got everything, I'm going to create a quick curves layer, just as a, an aid, not for the final thing. Uh, set the input at 10 and the output at about 250, and now I can see exactly where things are not black and white. Again with the dodge tool, sorry, the burn tool. Again with the burn tool, just nice, gentle strokes. Leave any whiskers where you can. If you're really gentle with the tool, it gives you a huge amount of control because it won't, or it'll try not to, um, shade the edges. 
So it'll let you just very gently work your way in amongst it, only affecting the really deep shadows, leaving things like the whiskers alone which is what you want. You want it to still have detail around those edges. You don't just want to do an awful black cutout that we've all seen and they look dreadful. I need this to look real. So I'm going to leave that little bit there. Little clues like that that say, you know, this is real, it's not. Just a cutout from another shot dropped onto black. And the, and the more you can leave of that, those little whiskers and things, the more convincing it will be. Some of it you'll hardly see, but it just gives you a sense if you overdo it, that it's been cut out and we really want to avoid that. Okay, so that's about there. Turn off the curves. And we're gonna flatten that or merge that down with the layer below. Um, so now I've got a very pure black background um, and a relatively clean dog in the middle of it. Um, what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna crop this. Let's have a look how do I want it to look. Out there, I think. Round about there. Just fill in those two sidebars. That's a better crop. So now I've got that as one merged layer. What I'm going to do is just put a quick vignette on it and just darken this area of the dog down here. Um, it looks a bit strong for me. So a new layer. Now you can do um, a vignette in a million ways. I'm going to use the exposure tool because I quite like the way it works and, and the effect it gives. It's going to bring the gamma correction up. So it's moving the mid-tones into the shadow. That's about there or thereabouts, I think. Not too dark. And then with a nice big soft black brush, I'm just going to paint back the bits that I don't want to be affected by that. The thing with vignetting is you should always, in my opinion anyway, it should always look like nothing's been done. You should never be able to spot that there's a vignette on an image, I don't think. So all, I've, all I wanted to do was just bring down his haunches here. I might even just increase that a little bit. So it's nice and shaded, and then your eye goes straight to his face instead. Once that's done, um, I'm going to create a new copy of all of that as a new layer, which is Shift, Alt, Command and E. A command called Stamp Visible. Convert that into a smart object. I'm always using smart objects um, for our work because when you apply effects to them, you can go back and change those effects later. And then I'm going to use the Nick Silver FX plugin, which is brilliant. It's by far, at least in my opinion, the best black and white editing tool there is. Really beautiful effects. Um, you can see I've got a few presets down here, different um, things. There, you, they're just my starting points. Different things give different effects, um, and it just depends what you're looking for. So for me, what I want on this one is something that is very akin to um, an etching. So we use this one, which is an, a, a one I know. It's got a very high structure, which is a local contrast effect, which I really like. And we're just going to push the highlights up a little bit stronger. Maybe just a few of the mid-tones. There you go, that's about right. Hit OK. And there you have um, a beautiful black and white. Now if I wanted to add a little bit of tone to that, what I can do is add a new adjustments layer, color balance, um, to get a nice warm tone, uh, 23, 11 and 2. It gives us just a slight coffee tone, but you can pick your own settings for that. And there you have it, one finished black lab on a black background.